Hey, what is happening? My name is Linus here watching TechLine and in today's video, I wanted to show you guys a brand new Samsung Galaxy A9. So this is the first smartphone in the world that has four cameras on the back. In addition to this, this is a premium device that is well built. It has pretty good specifications, a lot of internal storage and a lot more. As always, if you want to learn all the pros and cons of this device, make sure to watch an entire video. Let's go straight to the point. The Samsung Galaxy A9 is the first smartphone to have four cameras on the back. The main sensor has plenty of megapixels. The secondary shooter collects depth information that is necessary for taking pictures with a nicely blurred background. The third sensor allows you to take telephoto pictures with two times optical zoom. And finally, an ultra wide lens has 120 degrees field of view. On the front, there is a beefy selfie shooter. I will talk about cameras in detail soon, so stick around. The suggested retail price of the Galaxy A9 is about 600 euros here in Europe, but the price may vary depending on the region. For that price, you get a premium looking phone that has a classic Samsung design, a metal frame, high quality buttons, a Bixby button and a glass on the front and rear. Some say Samsung used plastic for the back cover, but honestly, I can't tell the difference. The back plate feels like it's made of glass. The lemonade blue color is my favorite, but you can also choose between the caviar black and the bubblegum pink. Keep in mind that color options availability may vary from region to region. I should also tell you that the phone's color will look different in this video, well, because it changes colors in different lighting and at different angles. The overall build quality is solid and the phone feels like a flagship. However, this is not a small device due to its large display. That screen is really nice and sharp, it has deep blacks, punchy colors and it is easily viewable in direct sunlight. Excellent panel overall. The fingerprint reader is accurate and fast and it unlocks the phone straight from the standby mode. There is also a face unlock feature that is reliable too, but I found myself using the fingerprint scanner as it is simply faster. I really like Samsung's approach towards the microSD cards as you get a dedicated slot along two nano SIM card trays. We should also praise Samsung for keeping the headphone jack that provides excellent audio thanks to Dolby Atmos sound enhancements. Now a few major downsides. The phone is not water or dust resistant, which is a feature left to Samsung's flagships even though phones like Galaxy A8 has IP68 rating. In addition, there is no wireless charging and no LED notification light. A highly customizable always-on display should replace the latter feature, at least this is what Samsung thinks. Lastly, there is no LED flash for selfies, for example, a cheaper Galaxy A7 has this feature. The phone has just one speaker on the bottom, so no fancy stereo speaker setups here. On the other hand, the sound quality is pretty good overall. Here are a few audio samples. Just before we start talking about the hardware, I wanted to show you guys a Wondershare Dr. Phone Switch tool and say thanks for sponsoring this video. With the Dr. Phone Switch tool, you can move data with one click and it's a simple click-through process. You can move data between devices with different operating systems, for example, iOS to Android, whether it is a phone or a tablet. You can also transfer contacts, text messages, photos, videos, music and many other file types. Finally, the Dr. Phone Switch tool is compatible with Android 8 and the latest iOS 12. Check out the link in the video description and you'll find a 20% off coupon code available for all Dr. Phone tools. The Galaxy A9 has specs of a solid upper mid-range class smartphone that has plenty of storage. The Snapdragon 660 is running the show and it assures really solid gaming performance. I played games like Asphalt Extreme, Asphalt 9 and Shadow Fight 3 on the highest graphic settings and the phone performs like a flagship. No stutter, no lag and the visuals look nice. 
The PUBG runs fine on medium graphics with just minor skipped frames but no lag, so we can definitely enjoy playing this popular game for hours. Finally, the phone does not overheat and overall, I can say this is a pretty good gaming phone, despite not having top tier chipset. The phone runs on Android 8.0, which is not the latest version of Android, but I don't think it's worth complaining about that because the phone is always snappy and responsive despite having plenty of features and customization options. Just like on any other Samsung phone, I like changing the looks by selecting different themes, wallpapers, or using some of the advanced features and this phone has plenty of them. I also like that the multi-window feature works fine and sometimes it's really convenient in practice. I've never been a Bixby user as I don't like voice assistants in general, but some users claim that Bixby has improved. Well, let's try. Open up gallery. Who is the best basketball player at the moment? Overall, I'm happy to say that the phone is fast and fluid on a daily basis. I didn't see any stutter, no skipped frames in the UI, despite installing plenty of apps and running quite a few of them in the background. Just before we start talking about cameras, I have to mention that the phone runs on an early software build, meaning that the image quality may be improved and the camera app may be updated. The highlight of the camera app is the ability to switch from one camera to another with a single tap. You can find plenty of camera modes and the main ones include a scene optimizer, live focus, super slow motion, hyperlapse, and the pro mode that allows you to adjust a few settings manually. In case you want to check out full resolution camera samples yourself, go to the Techline HD Facebook page and follow me for the latest updates. I have to tell you that it's really awesome to have so many cameras. It's like carrying three lenses in your camera bag. I took almost all pictures side by side in auto, wide angle and telephoto modes. The pictures taken in auto mode look nice, sharp and detailed. I also like the colors and dynamic range is usually decent. I tested the cameras on a nice and sunny day, so lighting conditions were perfect. Once you start switching between camera lenses, you may be both happy and a little bit sad. Again, I have to repeat that my Galaxy A9 runs on a pre-production software and this may be fixed in the retail unit, but I found that the pictures taken using different lenses have a very different color reproduction. Honestly, sometimes I even try to remember how the building looked like in reality. I think this will be fixed in the final retail version. The wide-angle lens gives you a whole new perspective of the scene and you can take really nice photos with it that will look awesome on Instagram. However, I wish this lens was able to capture more detail, dynamic range is not always impressive and there could be slightly less noise. In addition, there is a visible barrel distortion effect but the good news is that you can fix that with just a tap of the button. The pictures taken with the telephoto lens usually look nice and detailed. Again, I don't like that the color temperature is different to the pictures taken with the main camera, but that may be fixed with the future software updates. Portrait shots usually look really nice as the object or subject is nicely separated from the background with just minimal artifacts. When I tested the Galaxy A7, I didn't really like the scene optimizer mode, but it works so much better on this phone as it makes your pictures look more vibrant and a tad sharper. In general, low light pictures look quite good, but there could definitely be less noise. My advice is not to use neither wide angle nor telephoto lens as the pictures simply won't look good. There is a huge amount of noise and the level of detail is poor in low light. Selfies look nice, they are sharp, detailed and the colors are quite accurate. Selfie portrait shots look nice too as there are no severe artifacts around the subject and the pictures will look nice on social media. 4K video looks nice, although don't expect flagship great sharpness and detail. Also the video is quite shaky due to the lack of stabilization. There is a continuous autofocus feature but it is kind of slow and I found it to be jumpy at times. 
You can also switch from the main to the zoom camera while recording the video. However, you cannot use the wide angle camera for video. 1080p video looks really nice thanks to electronic image stabilization. The footage comes out really smooth, there is a good amount of detail and you can also switch between the main and telephoto cameras. However, the telephoto lens reproduces colors differently and the video is shaky. Slow motion video is recorded in 720p at 240 frames per second. The quality of video is quite good overall. You can also make short super slow motion clips. An ADP selfie video looks nice and sharp overall. Finally, sound recording quality is pretty good. Video and today is a nice and sunny day, but um, standing in the shade, but the lighting conditions are very good. As expected from a premium mid ranger, the call quality and signal reception have been great all the time, and other connectivity options like GPS work absolutely fine. The phone has NFC, Bluetooth 5, and plenty of sensors. Battery life has been really good. My record screen on time was about 11 hours, which is a very good result. On average, you should easily get over 8 hours of SOT. The phone supports fast charging and it takes about 1.5 hours to fully charge the phone with a supplied fast charger. So there we have it, the Samsung Galaxy A9, the first smartphone in the world with 4 cameras on the back. As usual, let's summarize all the pros and cons. The device looks and feels premium, the display is really nice and sharp, the overall performance is great, the phone feels fast, the battery life has been great all the time and finally, a unique camera setup lets you take high quality pictures and shoot nice looking video. It's really awesome to have so many camera lens that allow you to shoot the same scene from a different perspective. Now the downsides. I'm disappointed that the phone is not water or dust resistant, there is no wireless charging, no LED notification light, no LED flash for selfies, the phone ships with the Android 8.0 which is not the latest version and finally there is no stabilization in 4K video recording mode. At the end of the day, the Samsung Galaxy A9 may not be the cheapest mid-ranger out there but it definitely brings a lot of flagship great and unique features, despite these shortcomings. Finally, a quad camera setup on the back is what sets it apart from the entire competition, at least for now. So what do you think about the Samsung Galaxy A9 and its 4 cameras? Some people would say this is an overkill, why do you need so many cameras, this may be just a marketing gimmick, but in practice it's really awesome to take a picture using the auto mode, using the main camera, or you can take a wide angle shot, use the telephoto for zoom, etc, etc. It's really awesome to have that flexibility, but I'm asking you to tell me in the comment section down below what you think. Do we need to see more phones with four cameras on the back end? As always, like the video if you liked it, drop me a comment down below if you have any questions, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Finally, it was Linus, thank you for watching and see you soon.